So uh, it, it uh, across Alberta, this is a uh, infrastructure needs are probably the most important, um, but they're also the the least fun to talk about. It. Um, it's it's a lot of fun to talk about in arena. Um, I've also been a part of grand openings for water treatment plants, and I can assure you that not as many people show up to those. It's it's not as big of a deal. <laughs>
The paths and path systems are required to keep up with the growth and expectations of our residents. All of this requires long-term capital funding to be developed. Uh, with, a, with a mostly residential tax base, it, it's hard to properly plan for and keep up uh, with the needs without provincial help. Uh, debt limit maximums are coming close for many communities. Uh, in Penhold, we are still in need of key infrastructure builds to best serve our community. Uh, the Town of Penhold Public work, Public Works building was purchased in the early 1970s when the village of Penhold had a population of around 500 people. Uh, that is that is about 50 years ago, and we're still in that same building today uh, with a population of just under 4,000. The space does not meet today's safe working conditions. We are in desperate need of a new facility to meet the growth demands to provide the necessary services for our residents. Uh, the fire hall, again, same thing, was built in the 1970s as an addition to the original uh, village administration office. Uh, it is in poor state. Failing to meet today's equipment requirements, training and safety conditions for our volunteer firefighters. Uh, Penhold is home to, to third and fourth generation families. All, unfortunately, due to a lack of housing available to seniors, the, they end up moving out of our community when it, when it becomes time to, to look for assisted care facilities. <clears throat> so what does that mean for the, for the future of Penhold? So many communities uh, are carrying sub substantial debt loads that make it increasingly difficult to provide additional services for incoming residents from out of province. Our municipal taxes that were once able to provide funds to compete, complete major capital projects have diminished due to, sub, due to subsidizing the basic day-to-day -day operations. It leaves very little room to accommodate or plan for the larger needs. Uh, we can't even keep up with, with inflation with our tax base uh, and our, our, our ability to borrow is, is limited through through provincial law. Uh, we are appreciative of our partnership with the province of Alberta for past funding for much needed capital projects. Unfortunately, funding from the, from the province for capital projects has not kept up with cost increases and has actually diminished year over year, uh, making it extremely difficult to build and purchase um, capital or infrastructure projects. Without a strong commitment from the province, one of two things will happen. Uh, projects get postponed uh, or taxes will have to increase uh, to, to cover these costs. We need a government with a plan. Uh, successive governments talk about, have talked about how people are choosing to move to Alberta from all over the country, and that's great. We, we, want, we want that. But with that growth comes needs and responsibilities. The next government of Alberta, whoever that ne may be, needs to have a plan for how to fund that growth. Now we're going to head into our one-on-one -on -one interview with Mayor Mike Yargo. Here we are. Mike, I want to start with this question. Alberta municipalities has launched their Think Alberta Vote Local campaign. Today, they talked about the $30 billion deficit that the provincial government has sort of neglected uh, to give to the uh, municipalities. Locally, though, what does that funding deficit mean to municipalities like the town of Penhold? So for us, like you know, our our underground infrastructure is actually not in bad shape. We're we're pretty good compared and compared to some other municipalities. I know that are, are in worse shape than we are. Um, so for us, it's the it's it's the above ground stuff. Honestly, like I talked about in the interview, the our public public works facility, our fire hall, our you know the, we have, you know the roads. Um, that that's where Penhold is is falling behind and struggling uh, over the years. You know, something like a public workshop is is easy to sort of put off all the time. And part of that, I was thinking about this um, after the press conference as well, is part of that comes down to, you know, public works staff in every municipality are so good at just making do with what they have that it becomes easy for councils to sort of forget about those priorities or to put them on the back burner and then by focusing on other things and then we end up suffering for it because ultimately there's just not enough money. Uh, to go around. So you talk about the above ground infrastructure because the below ground infrastructure seems to be in place, but I've been to Penhold. Uh, I, I had a tour with one of your counselors just recently and uh, mm -hmm. you guys are growing. You guys have plans yeah. to grow. And this was one of the things that you really hit home today in your, uh, in your speech at the conference this morning was if you, do, if you continue to grow the way that you are, like other municipalities are, 
you're not going to be able to keep up with the infrastructure growth that needs to happen. And that's above ground and below ground. So yes. for municipalities like Penhold, how does that come into play when you are budgeting and looking at the future of any potential sustainable growth that you might have? Well, we, I mean, that's where we need the province to help. I mean, we have major in infrastructure improvement or uh, like roadway improvements that need to happen as we grow. Um, things like roundabouts for some of our, our municipal roads that connect with provincial roads. Um, we're on the hook for, for changing those into roundabouts because that's what Alberta transportation wants in some of those cases. Uh, and, you know, you know, we're talking hundreds of thousands to, to millions for, per roundabout. Um, we need the province to help with that. You know, it's as much as like, it is great to see Penhold growing and, but uh, you know, some, some of the growth we have, uh, comes from outside of Penhold too, right? We we have schools in the community that are regional schools. They don't just take kids from Penhold. They come from all over. Um, those traffic counts go towards our intersection improvements, right? Uh, which is great. It's, it's a good problem to have, but that's the reality. It's not, it's not just Penhold creating these costs. These are costs that come to us as a result of growing uh, and as a result of, of having more business and more, uh, more, more schools and things like that here. So the one question I, I really wish I would have asked during the press conference this morning, and I'm going to pose it to you right now, is what happens if the next government doesn't come to the table with this funding? Because Alberta Municipalities is asking for one point, and I, I don't know the exact number here, but over a billion dollars in annual funding to kind of catch up with this $30 billion deficit that is currently on the table. What happens if the next government doesn't? What happens to municipalities? Do you start have to look at the individual infrastructure projects and start saying we can't do it? There's no way. Yeah, honestly, th that's going to happen. Projects are going to get pushed back. Has um, it already started? Some... Oh yeah, we we push projects back all the time, construction projects, uh, because we just don't have the money and the grants aren't there. Um, so we have our, our MSI capital and, and and operating funding that comes. There are occasional grants that come out for wastewater and water projects, but none of that is is a set amount every year. I mean, you have to to apply and work for that. Um, you know, in some small communities, and this is probably an, an extreme case, but you're going to see small, smaller communities that are just going to dissolve because they have massive infrastructure needs that that they can't meet. Uh, and the province or the counties are going to have to step in and and help with that because there's just I mean, like I say, when our when we come to our underground infrastructure, we're fine. Our water lines have, have for the most part, all been replaced in the last twenty years. Uh, there's still communities out there that their their sewage goes through wax paper lines. You know, uh, like they don't do it like that anymore, right? <laughs> but the cost to replace those and to keep to keep all those lines up is just. Uh, so so sorry to go back to you know what happens if the next government doesn't do this. Um, the problem just gets worse ultimately. So if it's a billion dollars now in four years, it'll be 3 billion, you know, uh, nothing gets cheaper. We know that. Uh, what do you do we, in the short term? We've been term, through right? this before. Sorry, but what do you do Sorry. in the short term? Because right now municipalities have probably all passed their budgets or getting to the point where they have are about to pass their finalized budget. The provincial government has laid at your feet the uh, $744 million over the next three years per year for the new LGFF funding. What do you do in the short term until the ne next election or until the next government is sworn in because that could be two, three months away from now. And the lobbying has to start today, basically for next year's budget. Does it not? <laughs> yeah. So you, you sort of, I mean, yeah, basically you have to triage your projects and, and trust your staff that they know, you know, which ones are the, are the biggest priority. Um, if it means borrowing money, you know, how much money can we borrow? Obviously, uh, each municipality has a different debt limit. We we we're limit we're we're all limited to to the amount we can borrow. So that comes into play, especially on on large projects. Um, and yeah, you you really have to trust your staff to um to know which ones are are the priority and which ones okay we can maybe put this off for now, but it's going to cost us even more in two years. You, I'm assuming you're talking to different mayors and councilor, councils from across Alberta yeah. on this issue. Um, yeah. And I know Tyler did talk about, but I want to hear from you on this. 
What are you hearing from other municipalities? Because you you, you kind of, Penhold's kind of in this weird place where they're not well off, but they're not worse off than other municipalities with yeah. a lot of <laughs> underground infrastructure issues. For the ones that you are talking to, are they in the same position or are they a range of they're worse off and there's some better off than Penhold? Um, you know, I think for the most part, we're probably all in the same position. And the, the general theme is we need more, you know, inter intergovernmental collaboration, regional collaboration, things, things that happen in, in Penhold don't just happen because of people that live in Penhold. We have people come from all over the same as, you know, and I know I'll get Red Deer is a good example. Red Deer is a city of 100,000, but they have a, a population that use Red Deer, including Penhold as, as sort of a hub of, I bet you we're, we're close to 300,000 people that come into Red Deer News, you know, um, there's costs placed on on some of those cities by other communities coming in, right? That's why we need to stop looking at at our town town lines and and just vote, you know, Penhold needs this and Red Deer County needs this. I mean, we all have to be working together and understand that um, if, if we're rowing the same boat, we should be rowing rowing the same way. <laughs> It, it's weird that Alberta municipalities has chosen infrastructure to start off this three uh, uh, online seminars uh, over the next few weeks through this election, because you you, you kind of jokingly said that uh, the arena, everyone needs an arena, but Calgary gets an arena. And I'm not paraphr yeah. I'm paraphrasing what you said there, because yeah. it will be linked in the actual uh, the show that we're going to be doing here. But if you're trying to think Alberta and vote local, how do you do that when you have parties promising larger cities more infrastructure funding than, say, your city or your county or your local area? So we, that's where we need the parties to be responsible and to recognize that this is a major issue. And yeah, it's not as fun to talk about as an arena. And that, that was the point I was trying to get across. I mean, yeah, sewage treatment plants aren't that exciting. Water treatment plants aren't that exciting, but they're needed. You know, when people move to a community, they expect that they're they're going to have water. They expect that when they flush the toilet, it's going to go somewhere. So as a, in government, that's our job to make sure that part happens. And uh, you know, you know, you know. So what if it's not fun? That's that's the job uh, for the provincial parties. Need to need to take this seriously. Need to show that they're taking it seriously, and need to make it a priority for Albertans because if nobody's talking about it, it's not a priority. So I, I think that's why AB Muni's uh, wanted to start with this because it, it's critical. At the end of the day, uh, it's just like we say, not not always fun to talk about. You're telling municipal councillors and mayors and even residents of your municipalities to ask their candidates these tough questions about what they're going to do to address this deficit funding. Um, I'm going to ask a pointed question because it's always great to tell people to do something, but you got to lead by example. Have you started those conversations with your local MLA candidates? So, so I talked to, uh, well, our, our, our current MLA or, or um, who, who is the Minister of Transportation, we we meet fairly regularly and talk about the needs of, of Penhold. Specifically, we met uh, recently to talk about our, our intersection issues and some of the upgrades that we're going to be on the hook for and ask for his help there. Um, I, I've, I haven't spoken as much with our NDP candidate, but I, I will be attending the, the local forums and, and making sure that uh, our, our needs get heard there. What's the one thing you want municipal leaders from across Alberta to know about this infrastructure deficit that we haven't talked about, but also you want to hammer home? And even for those uh, municipal or MLA candidates who might be listening to this, what do you want them to know about this deficit that municipalities are facing and how their government or their party can help build the, uh, bridge that gap? Uh, I, you know, I did, I want to stress that the longer we put this off, the more expensive it's going to become. Um, we know just based on inflation alone that the, that it's going to hurt even more if we wait till the next election or wait for the next funding cycle or, or budget. Um, so, you know, sort of the time is now to, to look at these challenges that we're facing and come up with a plan to deal with it. Thank you for that interview, Mike. And now we're going to head to the comments that the vice president of the Alberta municipalities for cities under the population of 500,000, Tyler Gandam's comments from today's press conference. I want to start by respectfully acknowledging that we live, work, and play on the traditional and ancestral territories of many Indigenous, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. We acknowledge that what we call Alberta is the traditional and ancestral territory of many peoples presently subject to treaties four, 
6, 7, 8, and 10, and six regions of the Métis Nation of Alberta. I'm joined today by Mike Yarjo, Mayor of the Town of Penhold. For the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to speak about one of Alberta Municipality's key priorities, community building. In this instance, we are focusing our, remark our remarks on infrastructure, and it's the first of three major issues our association wants to bring to attention during the 2023 provincial general election. We're doing so as a part of Alberta municipalities' broader, nonpartisan Think Alberta, Vote Local information campaign. The goal of our campaign is to ensure political parties and candidates address the key issues that matter to our 275 member communities during this election. For more information on our Think Alberta, Vote Local, visit our website at www.abmunis.ca. In late March, Alberta municipalities sounded the alarm about Alberta's $30 billion infrastructure deficit. We said the provincial government was underfunding municipal infrastructure and the problem was only going to grow bigger over time as more of our members' infrastructure reaches the end of its projected life cycle and as demand increases due to population growth. $30 billion is an enormous number. It's a massive problem for Albertans and steps need to be taken by the next provincial government to address it. When people hear the word infrastructure, they tend to react in one of three ways. Some people roll their eyes and sigh or think infrastructure is so boring. Others know of the bridges, underground water and wastewater distribution systems and roads in their communities and think, I know we need this stuff, but it's really expensive. And others have visions of shiny new recreation centers, pools, splash parks, and arenas, and think they want these amenities in their community, but they can't afford to build them without the support from the provincial government. These are normal reactions. If you feel the way, if you feel that way, and we know that facts can't fix feelings. That's why I don't intend on spending my time up here boring you with facts, figures, charts, and graphs. It may come as a surprise to some Albertans when I say the government of Alberta has chronically underfunded infrastructure in our province's summer villages, villages, towns, cities, and specialized municipalities for the last 15 years. 15 years. It doesn't matter which political party was in power during that time. All of them have underfunded infrastructure to some degree. In its 2023 budget, the provincial government allocated $722 million for three years for municipal infrastructure. That, despite the fact Alberta's municipal property tax base is about $2.5 billion each year. That's a difference of nearly $1.8 billion. Alberta municipalities estimates that the current provincial funding for infrastructure is about $1 billion short of what's needed each year. Every year that goes by without addressing it adds another billion dollars to that deficit. Every year that goes by without addressing it costs local communities potential business investment and housing development. Municipalities in Alberta need about $1.75 billion in annual funding for infrastructure just to keep up. That's not factoring in population growth, which increases demand and puts strain on existing infrastructure. More funding of a municipal infrastructure is needed to help grow Alberta's economy. After all, economic development happens in Alberta communities. Increased funding for municipal infrastructure also helps attract and retain people who are moving to Alberta from outside the province. People expect reliable utilities, things like water, wastewater, and electricity distribution systems, as well as wastewater treatment plants. People don't expect decent amenities, sorry, people expect decent amenities. Things like recreation centers, arenas, pools, parks, libraries, community halls, and multi-use trails. We take infrastructure for granted. All those things we don't see like sewers, stormwater pipes, and drinking water systems, in addition to those that we do see like roads and bridges. Without these things, Alberta won't attract business investment and people from other jurisdictions. Without these things, Alberta won't accomplish the economic growth and success it seeks. 
In my community of Wetaskiwin, we have about $100 million in a deficit in infrastructure. We are currently replacing our wastewater treatment facility at about $54 million. In an old city like mine, support from the provincial government is so important to our community and the city's needs and infrastructure. As I said a few minutes ago, Alberta Municipality wants to get political parties, candidates, and regular Albertans talking about our province's $30 billion infrastructure gap. We want voters to ask political parties and candidates who show up on their doorsteps and ask for their votes, who has the best plan for addressing my community's infrastructure needs? The status quo, chronic underfunding by the provincial government is unacceptable and simply, simply won't cut it with Albertans. Albertans need better. Albertans deserve better. That's why Alberta Municipalities calls on the next government to step up and allocate $1.75 billion a year for municipal infrastructure. In a question and answer session later in the uh, press conference, I had the opportunity to ask Mayor Gandam and Mayor Yargo if Alberta Municipalities has sat down with any representatives over the last few weeks uh, from either of the two major political parties, the United Conservatives led by Premier Daniel Smith or the Alberta NDP led by leader Rachel Notley. Here's his response to that comment. Yeah, no, and they're in full election mode right now, so we won't be working through the details of, of what that new agreement might look like. But again, we're hopeful that they see the need in our communities, understand that the infrastructure deficit that we're seeing across the province is uh, a partnership that we're going to have to form between Alberta municipalities and the provincial government. So the short answer would be no, but uh, I think we know that there is money there and that they can be putting it into municipalities. So hopefully the government will see that. I want to take a moment and say thank you to Alberta municipalities and uh, Mayor Mike Yargo for sitting down and talking about this important issue of infrastructure funding when it comes to municipalities. And I want to thank you, our viewers. Thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on our latest interviews and special episodes that we have. We have some amazing guests lined up over the next few weeks, and we can't wait to share their stories with you. Now, if you're also able to, please consider backing the show to help continue to help us grow and produce more high quality content. Every little bit helps and we appreciate your support. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for behind the scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real life in-person conversations with the people in our lives or even candidates as Alberta Municipality wants us to. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time on the cross-border interviews. Remember everyone, just keep talking.